All right. Uh, hi, English 10-1 students. I am coming to you with some information about our upcoming week for May 25th. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit today about some key terms for the theater. So as you get into watching the second part of Romeo and Juliet, um, there are some things that happen with characters that are specifically special for the stage. So I wanted to talk about four different terms, and then I'm gonna give you a little preview of sort of your middle chunk activity, um, doing a little bit of writing of dominant impressions. Um, in other words, focus ideas that help to govern a paragraph, or um, controlling ideas or thesis ideas that sometimes help to govern a whole essay. We're just gonna do a, a little review of that this week. So first things first, if you can get open your course pack document, I'm on page seven, so you can kind of scroll down and see the seven there. And I'm just gonna talk about the words in this little white box. And while I'm talking, you can be typing in some of the definitions in your own words. Now, one thing that you're gonna see as act two progresses and we get Romeo and Juliet plotting how they can be together and eventually, spoiler alert, getting married. Um, and we're gonna see a little bit more of um, asides happening. So this is where there's lots of people on the stage, but one of Shakespeare's characters kind of walks over, has a moment all to themselves, and then they're like they're talking to themselves. And you're supposed to pretend as an audience member watching this that everyone else on the stage, they can't hear what that one character is saying off on their own. So an aside is like, aside. It's hidden from other people who are on the stage. Now this is different than just a monologue of one character chatting away a lot. So a monologue is a lot of talk from one person, mono, right, Mon monocular, one person's um, set of sort of lines. An aside is different because it's got lots of people on the stage, um, but that one person sort of talking to themselves, and it might only be one line where they're like, oh, that was crazy. Right? It might only be one line. Um, a monologue is a long, long set of lines, and it, it happens when there's people on the stage, um, but everybody can hear. And so you don't have to pretend that other people can't hear. If you're mono a mono, you're talking to someone, right? And so think monologue, it's one person chatting, yeah, but it's one person and everybody can hear. The aside is a secret, um, the monologue isn't. Now this is different than a soliloquy. Soliloquies are very special. And if you think about the word soliloquy, look at that like beautiful little S there, solo, right? So you know it's one, you know it's one person, one character, but a soliloquy is special because nobody else is on the stage. And so if you think about being solo, it's like the stage is echoey. There's nobody else around and it's only the audience listening into the character's th thoughts. So this is a special thing um, in plays that happens across different eras of time, but Shakespeare made a big use of soliloquy. He did a lot of this. And so you have a character on the stage telling the audience the inner thoughts of that person. Um, and so it's not overheard by any of the other characters. It's just the character who's speaking and the audience who's listening. So it's a pretty special thing. Um, those are the three things that you're gonna see happening. You're gonna sometimes see person like just coming off to the side saying their thoughts. You might see one solo actor on, or actor on the stage, actor, actress. Um, you might see one person chatting to another and having a big long speech um, like the friar does in this section of the play. Um, but the friar's is a monologue, can be heard by his little assistant. The um, soliloquies that Romeo has before Juliet can hear him or the asides he says, can I, should I stop at this? Should I talk at this rather? It's like, should I, should I speak at this? Should I interrupt her? Um, that little aside, you're supposed to pretend Juliet didn't hear him thinking aloud. Okay, so yay, you're gonna enjoy that with the balcony scene, especially the very famous scene by Shakespeare. Those words help you to, to picture the different techniques that Shakespeare is choosing to use. Um, the catalyst word is, uh, you probably know this from chemistry class or from science class. Catalysts are um, chemicals that are added in to make, or, or it could be a factor, like something in the environment that's changed in order to start a chemical reaction. And so if you think about like, catalyst. Um, a catalyst might be the addition of heat. So you could heat up water to create steam. That evaporative process, the catalyst there is the heat. The heat's needed for it to start. And so um, it's a very good word to talk about character changes because oftentimes in people there's something that happens in their environment or there's something somebody says that is a catalyst 
like starts the pot simmering. It starts us thinking a different way as a human. Um, so that catalyst could be a, a, an environmental factor, it could be another person. And that's a great word to add to vocabulary. Okay, um, now with that little five minutes about terms set to one side, I wanna just walk you through for five more minutes what your sort of task is this week and what, what you can use to help you write a paragraph about one of these two um, clips from the balcony scene or these two excerpts from that balcony scene. So if you scroll ahead down onto page eight, you'll see this page. This is the first part of Romeo speaking to Juliet. So this is one of your optional segments to zoom in on this week. Um, I've put the, the No Fear Shakespeare, the translation next to the original text there. So it should be easy for you to understand. And Romeo is going to be talking about seeing Juliet on the balcony, but he's doing it as an aside. She can't hear him yet. Okay, that's the first bit. Now the second bit, I've given you the added challenge. I've just copied the Shakespeare. So there's like the added challenge with the second bit. We're not having the translation super handy. You can still look it up on the internet. But this bit um, is Juliet's response uh, when they're actually already into talking. Juliet's asking him to, um, like, not to swear by the moon or other things. So this little bit's a great picture of her vision of love as opposed to Romeo's. Um, and this is a, a conversation as opposed to an aside. So it's a, it's a great one. Um, I'd like you to zoom into one of those two and, uh, and write about the vision of love that the character is showing. So who seems to have a more mature attitude towards love, Romeo or Juliet? Um, back up your response by using one of the excerpts there, okay? Um, and I'll do a separate video for my 30 IB class, but they're gonna be doing some comparative writing with a different kind of focus statement called the dominant impression. You folks are gonna be doing a single paragraph just on one of those excerpts, and your focus is a thesis. Now. Um, a focus statement or thesis idea, if that sounds scary or, or like, oh my goodness, it's been so long. Um, I've bookmarked in the discussion we're going to have when it comes to your full essay. So you just click the link and it'll take you to this page in the course pack. Um, this is a reminder that uh, what focus ideas are. And it also gives you two different tools, an arrow diagram or a box diagram that can help you when, it's, when you're planning out what you think about about a section of text or what you think about an entire play. And so these two tools are just options. They're not required, but they might help you get started. They're kind of like a formula sheet. It helps you get started if you're stuck. And then the more and more you do this, the less and less you'll probably need these tools. But for right now, my suggestion is that you plan out your focus idea for like who has the most mature love, that you plan that out with this diagram or with the box. Now, how do you use it? Well, here it is. Um, you first of all have to know your topic. So maturity, you can brainstorm some synonyms. So maturity means to be older, means to know more, to be wise. That's my little brainstorm. I would, I might write that down in the web. And then think about examples. Well, so what do I see in the, in the section that shows that Romeo, say, is wise? Okay, he's using all this nature metaphor. Um, he's, you know, he's able to control his speech. It's all that poetry that we studied last last time, last week. Um, so I can tell it's this beautiful, rhyming, higher level language. Um, I'm seeing a lot of stuff happening that's suggesting he's pretty wise about Juliet versus Rosalind, Rosalind from the beginning. I, I could use a lot of that stuff. So I'd put that on my mind map and I'd, I'd map out actual phrases. So whether that's, it is the East and Juliet's the sun, or whether it's a different line that talks about beauty in a beautiful way, um, I could show that Romeo is being artful, that he's thoughtful. Now, um, to write a focus idea, I might say Romeo is showing some maturity here because A, Romeo has shown maturity, he is mature, leading to C, and the B is the because, what's happened? He's showing maturity because he's not doing extreme talk about it's either yes or no to love, like he did at the beginning with Rosalind. He's talking about natural things, something that's a core to people, like um, like the sun and the stars. He's using the things in his vicinity and he's understanding how Juliet fits in. That's just one example. So I could say Romeo is mature because he's using nature to understand um, love. So it's showing maturity that way. Um, he's able to use nature. Romeo has become C mature. So Romeo at A has become C mature because of B, because of a process. Now. If you're wondering like what that looks like, so Romeo is mature 
because of the blue arrow B of the process. Um, you might make that process more complicated by saying when Romeo stopped thinking in terms of black and white, like hot or cold, that's that D part that's down here in orange. So I could add a when, I could say that there's certain things that have to happen before Romeo A becomes mature at C because of his ability to understand nature better. Um, I, could, I could actually say that like when a person lets go of simple talk, then they can use nature to have a mature vision of love. They can use their, they can situate love in their surroundings. They can understand love as a natural part of themselves. Uh, that's an example idea. And you can see it's that all of a sudden, much more complicated thinking, right? That instead of just saying, oh yeah, Romeo uses nature. Or, oh yeah, Romeo's in love. Of course he's in love. He calls Juliet beautiful. I've said, well, how do you know? Like, why? What happened in the process there to make him um, more mature? Well, Romeo at A gets to be more mature at C because he uses nature and can understand his love naturally. But the D part is, it only happens when he lets go of extremes of hot and cold. Now he's talking about the East and the West, which are their natural oppositions, not just like, oh yeah, love is hot and like, whew, uh, like controls me. Like, no, he's now like seeing beauty a different way as a part of his surroundings. Okay, that's one example of that little diagram. Now I'm almost at a little pushing 10 minutes here, so I'm gonna wrap it right away. Um, I will just offer to you that if that didn't make a lot of sense, then these transition words are a good help to um, getting a thesis. So you could say that um, people like Romeo tend to be more mature in love because um, of their ability to uh, draw, because of their ability to understand love through language. Or when a person lets go of black and white first loves, people tend to be more mature and Romeo shows this. So I can use a couple of these or I can work my way around this square and add some layers of complexity to my thinking. Okay, that's so hopefully going to be a help to you as you go back all the way. I'll zoom back. Sorry for the, the scrolling. Um, all the way to page 18. Um, I'm sorry, no, to page uh, 8 and 9. Um, and doing a little bit of writing this week. Arguing about who has a mature vision of love, Romeo or Juliet, um, using the excerpt. Okay, your focus is really on using symbols because that ties into your mask project. And it's also on narrowing down your focus statement because we're going to be doing introductions next week to an essay. And you want to have that practice with narrowing down your focus. Okay, uh, you'll do great. It's been wonderful to chat with you this week. I hope you have a wonderful week and um, that you got lots of rest in your kind of catch up week. Take care. And again, if you have any questions, come to our optional Google Meet or you can email me. And I have a, you know, about 24 hour turnaround time with email these days. Thank you. Bye.